All right, welcome to episode six of the 3D printer build series. Uh, I have the hot end mounted. I realized after the last video that I had to wire a lot of this stuff uh, all the way back. I had to get some adequate power because I was actually going to start heating some things up. So that required me mounting the uh, Aztec X3 to the table sort of temporarily. So uh, I took care of a lot of that stuff. Uh, and in the process, I also ended up mounting this extruder up in the back, which I apologize that I didn't show, but I didn't know what I was doing the whole time, basically. I just kind of started fiddling with things and getting it put up there. So um, I'll catch some shots of that later. But essentially, I've got a, a Wade's uh, geared extruder that comes through here, comes up through a Bowden tube around the top and down. This PTFE tube here, 4 millimeter outer diameter. I'm using 1.75 filament, so that's uh, a 2 millimeter inner diameter. So just a little bit of wiggle room. Um, and it slides pretty nice in there, actually. Uh, so, the hot end's good. I got my thermistors configured and everything, um, although I did have a lot of big problems, so it was overshooting a lot and I couldn't get the tuning just right, and so I, I kind of seek some online advice and uh, found out what to do. So, I'm going to run you through what it takes to set up an E3D hot end with Marlin firmware, uh, and a little bit about the calibration of the extruder, I think. So, uh, get right into it. Okay, so you may have found that I switched to repeater host. I did not switch firmwares. I'm still on Marlin firmware, but I noticed that this temperature graph in repeater host is really nice. Uh, it shows something that I couldn't find in Octoprint or Prompter Face, though I didn't look very hard, but this output extruder power here uh, is pretty important to see when you're tuning this uh, hot end in. Just, it's just nice to have. So um, if you're familiar with PID loops at all, the this would be your control variable here. Red is the temperature of the hot end. It's actually still cooling down from just a minute ago when I was running it, but uh, this so this is your process variable, which is your temperature, uh, and then your set point will be in, in uh, I think, like a teal color here. So uh, anyway, this is a pretty nice piece of software. I, I like it so far, and uh, I haven't played with it much, but uh, anyway, so in order to get this. Uh, E3D hot end going, it took me a couple of tries and a little bit of research, so uh, I'll go ahead and pass that information on. KP here, so your proportional gain, 12.82 seems to work. Now that's a value I got after an auto-tune, but I'll show you how to do that. This should work to begin with, uh, 0.92 as your integral term, derivative as 44.74 uh, seems to work, or anywhere pretty close to those is fine. Uh, one thing that was really important if you look back at this graph, 0 to 100 is your heater power. So that would be 0 watts to, in my case, 40 watts, because it's got a 40 watt heater cartridge in it. And so uh, what I've done is knock that PID max down to 150. So that'd be 150 over 255. So that maximizes your current um, at about, I want to say about 2.5 amps, which is about 60% of power or something, something close to that, 60%-ish of the power. So um, what, what it was doing is uh, it would actually ramp up really quickly and overshoot up to uh, 10 or 20 degrees. So the loop just wasn't responding fast enough and I tried a lot of stuff I couldn't quite get it to work. So uh, I'm sure you can tune it in better than that but for the sake of getting this thing running I'm gonna leave that there. I don't need 40 watts on this heater so um, should be good and be a little easier on my power supply as well. So. Uh, I've also taken this integral drive max down a little bit. Uh, this is max, uh, putting a max limit on the integral term. So it says right there, limit for integral term. So uh, it's going to limit that and keep it from going crazy on you. Uh, so once that's done, you should be able to do an auto tune. So you come back over here, uh, manual control. It's an M303 for auto tune, extruder zero. S, normally you would do uh, about 200 or 170 or something that you're going to run at, but for the sake of time I'll do a 100. And then uh, you can do a C8 as in number of times you want to do it, but I'm just going to leave that off, do it one time. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and run that. And really you should let this settle out as well. So settle, let this ambient temp is around here. So let it settle if you're doing a true auto tune. I'm just kind of running through this to show how it works. Um, so you can see down at the bottom here, auto tune has started. And uh, I'll probably jump into high speed mode for the rest of this and uh, 
so I don't bore everybody and let it finish out. see down here that the PID settings have completed. Uh, it has a little bit of data here. Let me slide this on up. And you get some various bias stuff. I don't know where you put that in. Um, other, These are just other types. So what you're looking for here is classic PID. So it should give you some nice values. Uh, you can see during that process it came on a few times, sort of oscillated, watched how the thing heats up and cools down, uh, and it's able to grab some values. So. A um, couple of different runs here, it looks like, uh, and these are all pretty close together, so uh, just pick, pick a set of those, and you can do a few things. You can uh, put them in uh, manually in the G-code, uh, and then do, I believe, an M500 that stores them to an EEPROM, or at least an emulated EEPROM. What I prefer to do is just put them back into here. So. Um, it has slight changes, but like I said, I didn't start from ambient, so I'm not real worried about it, but uh, it seems like everything's pretty good on this. I'm going to go ahead, I'm pretty close to idle temperature now, so um, looks like we had a little bit of a communication issue going on here as well. I did find that um, I get disconnections when my mini fridge that's under the desk here comes on or off every now and then I'll get what I guess is a power surge, uh, so I'll have to put a filter or something put it on a UPS or something to filter that power or just get rid of the mini fridge because um, it will fail a print I'm sure so uh, anyway so I will try to heat this guy up I'll show you just a ramp to about 180 and heat and you can see the set point actually went up this time during auto tune the set point doesn't show but that's fine you can see I, there's the 60% power that I said earlier, so it's just pegged out at the, the hottest I'm allowed to uh, give it right now. You can see a pretty steep ramp up here. started here um, 47 so about a minute to get to 180 that's pretty quick and like I said I've got the power down so it's cut the power here from the control variable I'm at zero watts now and just a tiniest bit of overshoot which is really nice way better than I was getting by trying to tune it by hand so uh, it's gonna oscillate a little bit as it comes in you can see it ramping the power back up And I'll go ahead and let this run just a minute longer um, and see how tight it holds the uh, set point. But it should be pretty darn good. And then you might want to blow on the, the head and, or put a fan on it or something and see if it can, uh, if you can knock it below that set point very far and make sure it's reacting appropriately. So that will determine how, how good your loop is. And it's coming in pretty tight right now. Yeah, it doesn't care if I blow on it, but anyway, uh, so that's about it for the E3D hot end. Uh, it should be good to go. Uh, I'm ready to make some, uh, make it spit some glue out, I guess. So we'll, we'll move on to calibrating the extruder now.